Welcome Collider fans. I am here with two of the stars from the President Show on Comedy Central. Now this is going to he's going to have to help me with this. Anthony and Atamanic? Atamanic. Nailed it. it. Yes. Nailed it. And Peter Ross. Atamanic. Oh no, no gross. Peter Ross. just just gross. <laughs> just, just gross. Just pronounced. Well, I'm a massive fan of the show. I've been watching the whole season. Thank you. Thank you, you guys, I mean, you must throw out a bunch of ideas because there's so much to work with with material with Trump and Pence. Yes. And so yes. it must be a joy for you two who are like seasoned improv and comedy guys to like yes. seize this situation situation and make a bunch of episodes out of it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a thrill to have an opportunity to take the president apart using our skill set and sorting through the material to make sure to make like a strong point too. Right. Yeah. So it's like sorting all the if you hit every if you ding every bell, you're lost. You right. have to find a point and hit. We are not thrilled that he is president. <laughs> But, but uh, we'll make hay while we're doing yeah, it. Right, right. exactly. We uh, frequently walk into the beginning of the work week and everybody scratches their heads and they wonder what they're going to do right. and how we're going to approach the week. And then he always provides us with bounty, uh, a delicious yes. bounty of material. <laughs> yeah. We just have to pick and choose our spots. Yeah. And for those of you watching for the first time, maybe don't know the President Show, Anthony plays Donald Trump. That's right. Peter plays Mike Pence. <laughs> and, and, and there's so much to play with with both of them. Yeah. And I, from what I understand of watching your previous interviews, this came up as just kind of a random thing during an ASCAT show at UCB, right? Yes. Someone threw out the president and then you started doing an imitation. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm not what I would say a, like a, an impressionist, but mm. we were just improvising and, yeah. and improv, you know, you yes and whatever's offered. And he had just uh, been two months after his announcement. Uh, he announced in June. And someone said, Mr. President, I thought it'd be funny to do Trump. I did probably a very bad I was so did like a Trump like this, <laughs> like the one that's done now by somebody else. Yeah, right. And uh, and that was my weak starting point. And then I just we toured and worked on it. And then actually again yeah. at ASCAT at UCB, yeah. when after the election was when Adam Powie and I and then Pete who all got together and came up with the show. So right. it's been very organic and, and sort of paralleling weirdly Trump in the sense of this thing that you didn't think that could happen that ended up happening. Yeah. It's, so. it's crazy genius. Like, because both of you Thank just, because what you do with, with, with Pence is great too. Like I was just watching the one where he interviewed Richard Painter and a couple other people yeah. about like, you know, empathy it's and so all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and right? ethics piece. and all that, yeah. Yeah, well, I think what's, what's, what's fun about the show is uh, the idea of having Pence as uh, his sidekick originally was just a way to mimic uh, the talk show structure. Right, we right, right. He would be as dull as Ed McMahon, um, and maybe dipping into sort of some Andy Richter territory where he was doing fun stuff. And then we realized, you know, Mike Pence has a lot to satirize as yeah. well, so much more. And actually, the worse that Trump gets as a president and as a human, the more there is to satirize about Pence because right. all he does is just sit back and let it happen. <laughs> yes. um, yeah. And he's got his own failings, and he's, you know, I think he's a duplicitous dark soul. Dark right. soul who's <laughs> probably not as Christian as he makes himself out to be. Yeah. He owns a lot of bunnies and thinks that's a cover for a lot of his other horrible oh, yeah. policies. So <laughs> there's there's a lot that's going on. It's uh, I think my uh, favorite yeah, thing about fire. your reactions, because you're such a fantastic performer, it's like when women are brought up, you do this great, like really subtle thing with your face because Pence is so uncomfortable right. around women or talking about women. Yeah. And it's just brilliant the we way you do that. We did that dancing during the show. Yes. Like we always dance between acts. And I always forget because Pete does this. I like dance with some of the audience and we brought a lady up to like dance for a bit. And then I sat in the chair and left Pete there, not on even yeah. purpose thinking yeah. about that thing. And right. then he's going, I can't be up here with you. <laughs> it's, always, it's so funny. And I'll say that the great thing tonight at, at our panel yeah. at 515 uh, is that like you get to see the live, the sort of version, you know, TV, we have to craft it and we have to pick the best language. And so we're doing one thing to do it live and to improvise it is where its roots are. And yeah. I think it'll be it's so much fun yeah. for me and for us to do that yeah. version of it, too. So yeah. we'll there's a lot of messy that. moments when we improvise. Oh, yeah. a lot of mess. It's the best. Great. <laughs> a lot of mess. I want to ask, how many hours of Trump do you guys and Pence do you watch a week? Like to prepare because you're you're so nuanced in your impression of Trump. I it mean, is beyond the other person we won't talk about. I won't, it is no, beyond he that. Shall not be named. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I would say I probably watch Trump like now maybe like two hours, three hours a week. Okay. Actually, not as much. And I mean, I'm talking news coverage. Right, right, right. There was a time when I had to study the rallies, and whenever he does a rally, I I'm 
very excited because yeah. you usually see a couple of new things and he's right now in a very grizzled he's getting so, his voice is getting crunchy or yeah. like shushy right now mm -hmm. like he's doing a lot of this it's like kind of an old man his upper palate thing he's doing more <laughs> it's almost uh he's almost on the edge of uh of carol <laughs> he's almost like this so like you know <laughs> it's crazy so he goes in these waves the same way his skin goes from orange to ruddy tan right. the same way his hair goes from brown <laughs> to like hyper gold to yellow yeah. he's like a mood he's like an evil mood he's ring yeah, evil right. fat mood ring <laughs> oh, you've talked about how you prepare for trump like it's all in the physicality the leaning yeah, in leaning and the, yeah the leaning forward yeah, all of that true. and this this whole thing right yeah, all of yeah, that yeah. with with pence what what preparation do you do physically to embody is because you do a more stiffer with i the, have a stiffer thing yeah. i'm also like far slimmer than he is i think mike pence would have been like a linebacker in the 1950s he <laughs> seems like a, like, a, like a high school football coach so i actually wear a bit of padding anthony wears a lot of well padding sure because trump is like Look a 200 and 50 pound man, uh, even though he would probably claim that he's like 190 yeah. or something like yeah. that. But uh, uh, yeah, Pence is like quite broad. So I wear like a bit of a puffy sort of upper thing. And then oh, I just, yeah. I just, uh, I stiffen my entire body. <laughs> yeah. So, because I don't think he's yeah. a very comfortable guy. And then there's moments when like we both just sort of break and sort of do things yeah. that we as people are able to do. Yes. Right. Um, but yeah, Pence's big thing is he's. He squints yeah. Yeah, all, all the, the time. time. His like he's always shaking his head and squinting. Right. Yeah. So I think that goes a long way for okay. me. Because his what Anthony does is so all encompassing. Right, right. Great. It's so fantastic. I, my my goal and my target is is a much uh, much more like uh, uh, smaller. Right. But so, that well, shoulders I'm, back. I mean Pete's nuance and the character. Yeah. Like there is a thing about. Like he has that George Reeves Superman body. Yeah, yeah. Like broad, it's like sort of pulled like back. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. and, and like he, it's a very specific look. You and, you, and you could see that in the Bannon episode where he melts. Like you're trying to hold, but you're doing this <laughs> yeah, thing where yeah. you're stiffly trying to hold him. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Anthony, with your, have you had any of his Trump supporters? Have you had any of his friends or reach out like? Pub, like not publicly, like you privately reach out to you and tell you that it's an amazing impression. Uh, well, uh, I, I, you know, I think we actually, as a show, do yeah. have a viewership of some on the edge, maybe Trump supporters, probably not the more rabid ones. Right. Some people, I think, just watch for the impression being good. I think right. other people, and that's why we do the show we do, is to hopefully kind of be like reachable. Like if we could reach, was it 72, 77,000 people? Yeah. We could just reach that number of people and flip it and be like, hey, I get he thought you that you thought he was your guy. He's right. not your guy. <laughs> so like, like, let's come back to reality. But um, uh, I've had Roger Stone, who's you know, oh, the yeah. architect. Of I course. met him at Politicon and um, he was, uh, it was a weird thing. It's a weird thing when they compliment yeah. you because you kind of don't, want the compliment in a way but he was like you do his presence like i've never seen someone capture his presence which is a great yeah. compliment yeah also kind of horrifying yeah, okay, very unsettling uh, yes yeah you meet and then it's weird you meet these hard writers and you go you if you watch the content of the show yeah how can you right like but yeah. you know yeah. i guess i will say this i think it's true especially in the hard right that weirdly, I think philosophically, they're all about being aggressive and coming at something directly. Mm. And I think our show does that. So maybe there's this sort of enemy's respect, <laughs> like where they're like, you know what? Like, at least you are direct. Yeah. You're not coy about your position. Oh, no. So I wonder if that's what it is, but I'm making it up. I have no idea if that's true. <laughs> what, you're a massive Star Trek fan. Yes. I imagine, yes, I see you. Like, you bring this up in other interviews. Star Trek, Star Wars, who? Yeah, you're all into it. Yeah, you're well, wearing, all in. You're and posing in that. That shirt, that new shirt that you've. Oh, I know. I'm a total poser. <laughs> Listen, I started watching with Pertwee and Joe. Oh, okay, I remember hardcore. the yellow card. All right, watch the Trout and episodes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm a huge Trek fan. I actually got to write. If anyone watches online, the. Audi commercial with uh, where it's a uh, Leonard Nimoy and Zachary Quinto. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote that. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, I no, got I got him to sing Bilbo Baggins. What? Like twenty five years. Wow. Even Shatner, who's now blocked me. Thanks. Uh, but Shatner at one point on Twitter was like, "I can't believe you got him to sing that song before we had a falling out because I talk politics." Oh. But the point being <laughs> that uh, yeah, I've actually met the entire original cast. I met D, D Kelly at a Star Trek convention at right. the Heinz Convention Center. In Boston, 1988, I've met Walter Koenig, uh, uh, Takai. I've met them all in the Shell Nichols, and okay. um, and I've also, you know, 
had the fortune of meeting all three. I met Carrie Fisher. I worked with her on 30 Rock. Right. I met uh, Harrison Ford. I used to sell him pizza. And, <laughs> uh, and I've met uh, Mark Hamill, who's an incredible talent, and a wonderful wow. guy, and a good friend. So I've been very lucky. And I, have, I met Capaldi, but I've nice. never met all Tom right. Baker. Oh. And I am desperately sad that I won't. And I will say the 50th anniversary Who, when Baker comes out mm -hmm. at the end, mm -hmm. I had to watch it three times because I burst out crying the first two times. And my wife was like, I don't think you really caught it. So <laughs> I watched the second time, started crying again, and then watch it a third time. Right. I am deeply invested in And my son has a Star Wars uh, pillowcase. <laughs> there we go. So, same on both sides. Yeah. No, but you're an accomplished writer in your own way, Peter, right? You've done, you've written for the Colbert Report, Late yeah. Night with Seth Meyers now. Mm -hmm. Are you still writing for Late Night or were you just, was that just a one year? No, I did that. I stopped in uh, 2015. Right. But I am. Uh, was it all I'm, the Sonic money? Was it all the Sonic money? You're like, I don't need much. to write. It's too much. Sonic I don't need money. to write anymore. So they it pay him in sliders. <laughs> Sonic doesn't serve sliders. So obviously, you. <laughs> Betray your ignorance, <laughs> but I'm one of the head writers and executive producers of the, oh, show, the show. In okay. addition to being Pence, do you so do I'm, the intro? Is that your voice? That's my voice yes, the intro, I know. Yes. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, the great. architecture and what we do and what yeah we do. I mean, that's this is it's Pete, Christine Nangle, mm -hmm. and myself, and and Emmy Blotnick yeah. are the top you know sphere and all the incredible writers that write for the show yeah. it's it is truly the opposite of the trump administration it's a collaborative yeah. collective a loving effort, effort. it's that's and we're different. all proud of our boss yeah <laughs> <laughs> are we no, oh. so. well anthony and peter thank you so much you, for taking the time oh, here to man, meet us it's, 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 it's such a blast i'm such thank a fan you. of the show so it's an thank honor you. for me to meet you both it. yeah thank so you guys uh, if you're going to watch we're going to be streaming the panel uh the president's show we're going to stream that was at 5 15 is that correct 5 15 tonight you see that and of course the President Show on Comedy Central. Check for the time. This is John Rocco for Collider here from New York Comic Con.